Shall we do this? Are you ready to ask each other some questions? All right, I'm starting here. What's your name? And what's your film at Iris? Where have you traveled from to be here? Thank you. Uh, I'm Dennis Shinners. Uh, my film at Iris is Barrio Boy. It's a feature film. Uh, and from New York. Uh, I'm Trevor Anderson, and I'm the director of Before I Change My Mind. Um, I came in from Canada. I'm living in Montreal. My name is Kamil Krawczycki. I uh, came from Poland, Warsaw. I live in Warsaw, and um, I brought him here my film Elephant. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's it, I guess. <laughs> and I'm Graham Cantwell, and my film is called Who We Love, and I came from Galway in Ireland. So let's move on to another. We're getting into it, yeah. So, how does it feel to have your film showing on the big screen at Iris? It feels great, but honestly, I, I won't know until after the screening, you know. Just uh, praying for a good, technically smooth, uh, on a technical level. So, yeah, but it feels great. Yeah, I had my screen yesterday, and the audience is really uh, friendly. So, <laughs> some of our... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, mine is tonight, so I don't know yet, of course, but I'm hoping for the best. But I'm just happy to be back showing it at a festival. I love festivals in particular, and I especially love queer festivals, you know? I think that people say th live theater is always different based on the audience, and maybe they think that's not true of film, but I don't know about you, but I think it's also true of film. Like, when you show a film to one audience and you show the film in a different context, it is different. It feels entirely like a different film, which can be disorienting if you're the filmmaker. Mm -hmm. But I love seeing it in all these different contexts because I I learn different things about it every time. Uh -huh. yeah. And it's it's I kind of feel the same way about like every audience reaction is different. There's a um, Walter Murch and Michael Andiate did a book together, The Conversations, and they talked about this thing where if every stage of a film is incomplete, and even when you get it into cinemas or in front of an audience, there are things left to be filled in. There are gaps, and the audience fill in those gaps. So each audience fills in different gaps, or it may, they own it themselves in a different way, you know. And that's one of the things I love as well about festivals is you get the different reactions. And when you go and when you're present at a screening of your film, it's just much more, I don't know, it's much more fulfilling as, as a filmmaker, as an artist, to be able to see how people feel afterward and how they react to it um, and that's that's what I'm looking forward to most just to seeing because you know I think we've all had films at Iris before and it's you know when you have a short film it's part of a, a group usually um, and it's you know it's a lot of fun to be in, in there and then when you have a feature it's like the pressure is on you know what I mean but in a good way I think you know and I'm looking forward to seeing how people respond to the film yeah <gasps> we go for another one you ask this Oh, I asked one already. You it's your turn. Yeah. <laughs> mm, LGBTQ plus storytelling is at the heart of, of Iris. What's the experience of telling LGBTQ stories like in your home countries? Hmm. Okay. For you. Yeah. Uh, what is the experience of telling queer stories in Canada? So. You know, pretty good. I started in shorts and had three play at Iris, and so I, I really developed my filmmaking through specifically queer short film. The funding schemes in Canada, if you're doing short work, you're usually being funded by the arts councils, and you're being the de funding decisions are being made by a jury of your peers. So there's like five other filmmakers deciding who's going to get the money. So you get rewarded the more risks you take and then you start making feature films like I did and all of a sudden the decisions are being made by single bureaucrats who want to keep their jobs I can't believe I'm saying this on the internet <laughs> but I mean but I guess the reason I will be brave enough to say that on the internet is because Telefilm Canada the main funding arm knows this and they're beginning to make changes and they're beginning to they're not quite at the stage where they're funding things through a diverse rotating jury of peers which I think they should do but uh, they are certainly aware that they can't just have single gatekeepers and so they are they're they're diversifying the level of consultants and such that um get brought in to decide the funding i don't know so for me 
Uh, that's a, that's the difference I can think of in my home country. Like, there's really interesting, strong, bold, artistically creative work getting done at a at a shorts level and at an art level. Um, and then I think the the features are still catching up, is what I would say. If they'll let me back into Canada after saying that, I will say that. Who wants to go next? Anyone feeling this question? You want to talk about Poland? Yeah, maybe me, because um, in Poland we don't have many queer films, actually. Uh, we uh, Actually, um, right now it's changing and you can, f you can feel it. I mean, uh, before before my film and few films that we were released uh, in last two years, I guess, we had only one gay film in 2013. Yeah, and Polish cinematography is really really big, really huge. We produce like uh, 80 films a year. So yeah, that, that's surprising. Uh, but as I said, um, it's baby steps for us, but um, we are doing it, yeah. How about states? Uh, not speaking for the whole country. Um, I just, just for me in New York, uh, I, I get not. I don't have a broad swath of information. All I can say is it's just been very personal. That's it. Yeah, I mean, like the thing about Ireland is Ireland is you know on the surface a very progressive country. Um, you know, we had the vote and that was put through the marriage referendum and and that was great and it opened a lot of doors. The thing is, I find a, there's a little bit of lip service going on where they'll say, we must do this, we must do that. And then you go and try, you know, you say, well, here's a film, our film, you know, can we get funding for it? Oh, yes, we must look at that, but no. Do you know what I mean? So I'm hoping it'll change. I'm hoping you'll see more diverse stories, you know, and it's, the, you know, for 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 our society where it's been quite homogenized for a long time we got to catch up with the reality in the stories that we tell you know and not just in a token way that's that's the point that we've been trying to make me and Katie my co-writer on the film it can't be a token thing it's got to be central you know and part of and, and a natural part of exactly yeah and not just to tick a box you know what I mean so that's where we're at at the moment I kind of feel a little bit with Ireland is that it's ticking boxes at the moment but there are young filmmakers coming up who are determined to tell their stories no matter what. And they will get to tell their stories. Uh, and it's up to, you know, the likes of me, the older generation, to ensure that that happens, that they're given the space to do that. And that's across the board, you know what I mean? So, yeah, there's, there's work to be done, but we're doing it. How does making a feature film compare to making a short? I kind of feel like the difference between making a feature and you guys can tell me if you agree with this is it has a lot to do with stamina you know sticking power sticking with it and just it's a lot longer to make and it's not just you know you make a, a short film you can make a short film in three days or one day um, and it's you know then you can spend a lot of time in post uh, with a feature film it's not just that bit of time filming it that that's longer it's exponentially longer getting the money together writing the script, editing it, doing all the post work, all of it, it's just bigger. There's a lot more to it. And you need a lot more people, I find, you know. And and it's it's also it can be tough to maintain your focus. For me, you know, it's just you gotta you have an idea and you need people around you who can make sure you have the space to keep that focus. You know, people who can take the reins for other aspects, producers or, you know, assistant director or whoever it is who can kind of just steer the ship a bit in one direction from a particular aspect and as a filmmaker give you some space because that mental real estate for me that's that's really vital for a filmmaker um, and if you don't have that then the work suffers you know so that that's what I kind of I kind of kind of feel like as a short filmmaker you can wear a lot of hats you can do a lot of things. You can be the producer, the editor, the writer, the, you know, all of it. Um, for a feature film, you got to learn to delegate. For me, the biggest difference, I made a lot of shorts. I made maybe too many shorts because I could not quite get my head around, like, there are so many features that should be shorts, you know, and I just always, if I can compress a story, I'm going to compress a story. And I was not getting the... 
idea that I felt warranted 90 minutes and seven years of my life uh, for the longest time. And then I got a writing partner. It's that thing of like, you don't have to do everything alone. You were talking about delegating and sharing the load. Um, as soon as I realized, you know, you don't have to do everything. And when you're done, don't pretend you did. <laughs> so my writing partner, who I wish was here with us to talk with us, his name is Fish Grakowski. And between the two of us, we were able to, you know, just there was someone to throw the ball around with. And then writing became when I'm writing alone, all I can see is what's wrong. And as soon as I was writing with a partner, I became a good leader and I could see what was working and focus on well this is working forget about the rest it'll sort itself out let's focus on what's working and I kind of switched into director mode and uh, and it became fun you know so that was the big lesson for me was how do I keep this joyful and the answer was you know uh, my collaborators uh, what is your favorite part of Cardiff so far so my favorite part of Cardiff is actually the people in Cardiff the, you know, for us, it's Iris. It's the people at Iris. The you know behind behind the scenes people at Iris uh, love what they do, and it's infectious. It's the community of people who are putting Iris on, right? And that's another reason I really like queer film festivals in particular, is you'll get a real community building atmosphere. Um, intergenerational. I'm looking at the young people behind those cameras, you know, and. Um, I was first here in 2008 with my short film. How old were y'all? You were seven. You were five. And you were 18. So, and here you are working at Iris. You know, this is what I like about Iris. It is a community. Uh, it is a diverse community. And yet, I get here and I see the two guys whose house I stayed at in 2008. And they're still volunteering for the festival, you know. This is what I like. This is building something that will last because it's based in community. Favorite part of Cardiff? Um, let's see. Um, I just discovered Kelly's Records, which I will be going back to. Uh, the Golden Cross Bar, if you haven't been there and, and you like the drink, it's a wonderful, old school, ancient, beautiful slice of heaven pub. Thank you. And, uh, and just walking the streets. Just walking the streets. How has Iris and Cardiff changed in your perception? Iris has only grown and shown its resiliency. And I'm sure, um, I can't imagine what the last two years must have been like and, and the pivots that had to be made. Um, so uh, she, she just keeps getting bigger and stronger and uh, I, I'm just in awe. And uh, the second part of the question? Uh, that's it, how is Iris and Cardiff? Changed? Cardiff, Cardiff, the construction here is endless. It was being rebuilt in 2007, and this just keeps on going, so. <laughs> I was here in 2017, uh, and then I went to Chan uh with the outreach, with Iris Outreach, and I don't know necessarily that it's a change, but it's a, it's a constant. The thing for me, it's a constant, and it has remained constant, is the ethos behind it. What they care about is other people, young people, community, bringing people up. Um, and to see that that hasn't changed is brilliant for me, you know what I mean? Just to, just to see that it's still about the same core fundamental values um, and that films are at the heart of it, but more than that, it's people, you know, and it's, and it's, and it's reaching people and it's, it's talking to people and it's, um, uh, yeah, like uplifting people. That's that's what I love about this festival, and it's welcoming, you know. And you do feel like part of a family when you come to Iris, and and you know we, you keep in touch with people, and uh, that's that's brilliant. And I don't think that'll ever go away as part of this. So for me, it's not what's changed; it's what stayed the same. That's lovely. Um, that's nice. Uh, I do I do remember the last time we were in Cardiff, though we. We were at every single screening, so we literally just saw the inside of a cinema. <laughs> so, you know, the, it's a different cinema this time, so I'm looking forward to that, so, yeah. What is next for you and your film? We'll start here. What is next for you and your film? Um, well, we are hoping to do a cinema release of Who We Love at Home in Ireland, um, and it'll be on the national broadcast it and hopefully pretty soon afterward. Uh, we, When I grew up in Ireland, we had two channels, RT1 and RT2. <laughs> that was it. So it'll be on the, the, the kind of the, the flagship channel there. 
Um, and then our plan is just to go do the festival circuit and find distributors abroad and, and try and take our message. Like the message of our film is, you know, in, in some ways we're, we're preaching to the choir in terms of, you know, the, the, the message behind it is quite simple. But at the same time, I've said it before, sometimes the choir can get complacent and they need a kick in the ass sometimes and hopefully that's what this can be. And, you know, if we can reach some other people, parents of young gay kids and get them watching this story, then maybe it might start some conversations that hopefully will lead to some healing. You know what I mean? So that's what we're hoping for with this, with this film, that we can do that, so yeah. I have a friend who said, yeah, it's good to preach to the choir. The choir came to be preached to. Who do you want to preach to, the choir or the people across the street trying to just watch TV? So yeah, I'm a big fan of the choir. I like the choir. Um, our film, we're just, yeah, we're just on, we started on the festival circuit in August, and so here it is, what month is it? October, is it? So <laughs> you get a sense of my mental state. Um, what day is it, October? Uh, and so, yeah, we're just, we're just uh, starting our international festival run, and hopefully, you know, like everyone, I hope we can find distribution and get it to the people, but for now, all I know is festivals, so um, we'll see what happens. Isn't it an interesting place to find ourselves wondering what'll happen to this thing that we were responsible for knowing everything about for so long and now we know so little. What's next for you in your film? Um, we are also in this festival circle right now, but I'm very happy because we will have a Polish uh, premiere in cinemas, I mean cinema release in November. So yeah, Great, <laughs> I'm looking forward, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I have no idea. We'll see what the audience says tomorrow night, and that'll that'll be the first wind in the sails or sink the ship. So we'll we'll see. So uh, yeah, we got world premiere tomorrow night here at Iris. So or it would have been Friday. Will be Friday, October fourteenth, depending on when this goes out. Um, uh, yeah. So no idea. But that was great what you said. Um, the thing we know everything about now we know nothing about. You know, <laughs> it's perfect. Uh, so thanks a million guys for listening to us talk uh, and if you get a chance do check out the films uh, come along and support Iris support the arts support queer filmmaking um, and you are tomorrow night Friday night, Friday night 14th. yes 14th and yours will be in cinemas in Poland it's already been screened here yeah on Sunday okay and uh, tonight at seven tonight at seven so yeah, get this up online quick, guys. Uh, and then we're on Saturday at 4 p.m. Um, so yeah, and thank you guys, and thank you guys. It was really fun. <laughs>